Now, as a professional teacher, you will be expected to stay up to date with research in the field of education and in your own specialised teaching areas as well. Now, teachers are notoriously quite poor at professional development and professional learning. Rather surprising, given the nature of the profession is all about learning, um, teachers themselves are not particularly good at supporting their own learning. Part of the nature is that teaching is very much a nurturing profession where we look always to support others, generally our students, rather than looking at how to support ourselves. Um, and in the main, we do a very poor job at supporting ourselves. And it's probably one of the key areas that we need to focus on as teachers in order to improve and to in, um, support our ongoing development as a teacher. So one aspect of that is research, staying up to date with what is happening. We've just talked about a number of specific issues, but more generally, you should be aiming to have a strategy to keep up to date with what's occurring in education and in your specific um, teaching areas. So part of that is reading research articles. There are a range of teacher focused journals and also a range of more academic journals that report on research that is being done, looking at how to better the teaching processes. Then there's also attending conferences and workshops that generally have a mix in terms of teacher directed conferences um, between what teachers are doing and sharing practice and what's occurring in research and sharing what's happening in research into teaching practice. Then there's also engaging in online communities and discussing and maintaining an ongoing conversation with best practice in education. Then there's um, collaborating with colleagues, having discussion groups with your um, other teachers in your school or with other teachers in your discipline area, uh, meeting up in what we call teach meets or over coffee or however, and just discussing things and sharing our ideas and approaches and what has been learned and what's been tried and what has worked and what hasn't worked. Then there's participating in what's known as um, various research approaches, um, action research, um, design research and self-studies. We'll talk about that in the next section. Then there's also pursuing professional development. So undertaking your own specific learning. Now professional associations uh, put on professional development programs Unions sometimes put those on. Schools sometimes put on professional development activities and programs. And in order to maintain your teacher registration, you are expected to do a very minimum amount of professional development each year. Most professions do a hundred times more. Teaching is an area that is very much lagging in this space. Um, and finally, building relationships with um, researchers and with other institutions such as universities and organising programs that link the two and utilising the expertise that's available in other locations, either from parents or from universities or other um, institutions and building out your own professional learning through that process, bringing in industry experts um, and so forth. So you need to think about how you're going to engage with your own ongoing professional learning beyond your teacher preparation. Now, there are challenges with this. Teaching is a very busy prof profession. Just as we maximize and utilize every moment we have with our students to maximize their learning, we schools maximize every moment they have with teachers to maximize student learning. Um, schools are really good at optimizing and filling up every moment of time with productive activity which unfortunately tends to leave less time for self-directed learning and things of that nature. So you do need to make sure that you engage with professional development. Um, sometimes the, the culture in a school is not conducive to professional learning. As I said, teachers are not good at this. And we can sometimes build up a culture where teachers are very dismissive of professional learning and bringing in outside expertise to provide advice and support can sometimes be met with 
quite strong derision um, in some schools. Other schools build a very positive culture around professional learning and can do some really fantastic things in that space. Uh, of course, there are time constraints. That's something that every profession has, but a doctor would not be able to survive as a professional if they didn't spend hundreds of hours every year maintaining their own professional learning. Same with most professions. Teaching is one where we've been able to get away with that because we were a trade and we've only recently become a profession um, with the greater expectations around that. There's also sometimes a lack of access to resources, particularly if you're teaching at a remote school um, where access to professional development can be challenging. But online professional development does address many of those issues. There's also sometimes around personal interest and motivation, just staying motivated to improve yourself and to improve your understanding of things. Now, digital technologies is in some ways a lucky um, subject area in that it changes so much we're forced to engage with professional learning just to stay up to date with what's required. Other subjects, much less so, unfortunately. And then finally, there's just the opportunity for collaboration with colleagues. Now, some teachers love doing that, some don't. Teaching can be a very isolated profession where you can just go off into your classrooms and essentially don't have anything to do with any other teachers. Um, that, again, is not the best and conducive to professional learning but for many teachers it is the norm so with this there are benefits to engaging with research you'll it will advance your career you'll be seen as more proactive and um, a leader in your space it'll enhance your teaching because you'll be incorporating best practices for your students um, It'll also enhance your collaboration with others and that can reduce your workload because you'll get access to new ideas and resources without having to create them yourself. It can also improve your own critical thinking and reflection. The process of having to learn helps you be a better thinker and better able to model that process with your students. And that's probably one of the most significant advantages of being engaged with your own professional learning. As a teacher, your ability to model learning to your students is invaluable. It's probably the thing that is most significant to your teaching effectiveness. Um, and if you're a disengaged, disinterested learner, your students will model that um, to their detriment. And finally, you can make contributions to the field, particularly in digital technology. That's an emerging, changing field that's always up for new input into what's happening and sharing that and others taking that on board and becoming a leader in the field of digital technologies. So think about some of the approaches that you can do to engage with research and how you can be an effective teacher, particularly with uh, digital technologies, which is the subject of this course. So think about how you can engage with digital technologies conferences and workshops and professional associations and we'll discuss some of these next week. And we'll discuss it more in the tutorial.